During a time when we're seeing a decline in congregations at more traditional churches across the nation. 95% of churches have under 200 people in attendance in any given weekend. There's a sense that we're losing our consumer base, that we're losing our young people. When the business falters, what do you do? You go back to your customers. What are their needs? What are their desires? Then you give it to them. And so worship must be tailored to the tastes of our target audience. Do you want to build a snowman? Statistics show that the mega church keeps growing. That's very popular for the same reason that people go to football games. There's this mass euphoria and it feels great. There is a spiritual catharsis that takes place. The customer is always right, but the customer and the consumer of worship is not man. It's God. We do not understand how great and holy our God is. Our God, and he's speaking in a New Testament context, is a consuming fire. Yes, the Old Testament God was not to be messed with. It's even more serious in a New Testament context. There is so much more thought that our forefathers put into worship services. All you really need is a Bible, a flask of water, a flask of wine, and a loaf of bread. It's not a cultural phenomenon. It's not a Western thing. It's not a European thing. It is a biblical thing. I thank God for promoting the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why it's so crucial to seek to get worship right. When we put God back in the central place in worship, we don't lose anything, we gain everything. We think, what do I like? Or what would non-Christians like? Or what do the people in my church like? And we're missing the central question. How does God want to be worshipped?